today's video is about a mother seeking justice after her two children, ages seven and nine, were unalived while in their father's care in 2021. It has officially been labeled an accident, but after looking into the case and hearing the mother's concerns, I have questions. Let's start by looking at an article from California Diver Magazine to get an overall idea of what happened. Unlabeled tanks and unsupervised children to die in Florida swimming pool scuba accident. Two young children ages seven and nine died after a scuba diving accident in a family swimming pool in Jensen Beach, Florida on April 23rd, 2021. The siblings were with a parent who was visiting friends at the home. Both kids, whose parents were experienced technical divers, were described by their father as being proficient swimmers and proficient scuba divers. They were given permission to use a scuba tank unsupervised in a swimming pool while the adults left the area to look at another piece of equipment in the garage. Approximately 10 minutes later, the adults returned to the pool area to discover both children unconscious at the bottom of the pool. CPR was attempted and an ambulance was called. It was too late. Despite all attempts to revive them, both children died three and a half days later. So what happened in this incident? Was it simply a case of panic and drowning or something else at play? During the subsequent investigation, the air from the tank the children were breathing was analyzed by the father in the presence of the Martin County Sheriff's Department. It is believed that the tank they used was filled with helium instead of air. It is not known if the cylinder was labeled as such. It's looking like the children were not breathing the oxygen they believed they were breathing. It looks like they were indeed breathing helium. With helium, they would have the sense they were actually breathing oxygen, so they would feel like they're breathing normally. Said Major John Budin psych with the Martin County Sheriff's Office. They wouldn't get the feeling that they would need to take a breath, so they would have breathed helium, and because there is no oxygen in helium, ended up in the state that they were in. Helium is often used in technical diving as one component of a trimix, a mix of three gases, to reduce the amount slash concentration of oxygen in the mix. Helium is easy to breathe. It's colorless, odorless, and tasteless. It also results in rapid unconsciousness when breathed alone. A hypoxic mix, such as 1050, is used for deeper diving as a bottom gas only and cannot safely be breathed at shallow depths where the PO2 is less than 0.18 bar. It's unknown if the tank the children used was filled with 100% helium or a mix. The tragic accident is still under investigation. The way that authorities seem to have dismissed any notion of foul play is questionable. Why would any parent, especially an experienced scuba instructor, give their kids an unmarked tank to play with in a pool? It makes no sense, right? There is a change.org petition to reopen the investigation. I have personally signed it and I encourage you to sign it as well. The link is down in the description below. Susie, the mother, has taken a TikTok to share her story. Here are some of her videos. My now ex-husband, their father, who I really served divorce papers to in 2020, took our children to a friend, a house of a scuba diving professional which I didn't know he was going to work there because my ex, of course, is a scuba diving professional. He worked in the scuba diving industry for 20 years and we were technical divers before we got into the scuba diving industry. My ex-husband took our two children to the home of a diving professional. There he borrowed his dive gear and used his pool to put our children alone in his swimming pool with an untested, unlabeled scuba tank 
I went back to the garage to work. My children were given a bottle of 100% helium to play with. Helium, which is unbreathable, like a balloon. And my children were left unattended in a pool where they drowned. Sorry, it's taking me a lot of therapy. To talk and not be so emotional. Sorry, it just makes my heart hurt. So yeah, I'm a scuba diving professional. He's a scuba diving professional. He went to work at the home of another scuba diving professional. But my children were not scuba diving professionals. My children did not have experience with scuba diving. My children wouldn't know anything about testing scuba equipment. They definitely wouldn't know that if they breathed off of a helium regulator and they sounded like Donald Duck, that something was wrong. I'm angered. I'm angered. Sorry, a lot of therapy again. Did my children don't get justice. I know it doesn't bring them back. But does that mean I should let it go? Try not to make it run my life. But I don't think I should let that injustice go. So, somebody asked me why now and I think my answer is I've put my trust in detectives to do their job and the state to do their job and lawyers to do their job. And I've never had a voice. I've lost my kids. I'm losing my farm. <laughs> Means I'm losing my occupation too. What do I have left to lose? So help be my voice. I want justice for my kids. Help me get justice for my kids. I can't say thank you enough for everyone who has signed my petition. Every time you sign that petition, you send an email to the Martin County State's office and the Martin County Sheriff's. And what I'm really asking for is for them to open that case back up so that someone with fresh eyes can have a look. I could really use the help of maybe some retired detectives or someone from a different department that would like to look at this case. I mean, the case is closed with the Freedom of Information Act. Anybody could open up and get all of the details about this case and help me build something to put together, to bring back to them that makes it uh, in a form that they would be able to use and not my em emotions. And then it would tell me whether I'm crazy or not. I could move forward with my life that I've tried everything I could do. Thank you. So my ex-husband had an underwater scooter company for more than 20 years. 
that is a product that pulls a scuba diver around underwater, kind of like a jet ski underwater. Um, so he was working in the scuba diving industry for most of his adult life. And the friend whose house he brought the children to uh, is a professional instructor. Sorry, I keep using the word professional because that's what they were. And his friend, the homeowner, whose house he brought them to, he still teaches to this day. So yeah, I don't know what else to call two people that have businesses in the scuba diving industry, except professionals. So somebody asked me why now, and I think my answer is I've put my trust in detectives to do their job and the state to do their job and lawyers to do their job. And I've never had a voice. I've lost my kids. <laughs> I'm losing my farm. <sighs> Means I'm losing my occupation too. What do I have left to lose? <laughs> so help be my voice. I want justice for my kids. Help me get justice for my kids. For you, I bleed myself child. For you, I bleed myself child. So, here's my problem that I have with lawyers. My ex went directly and got himself a really good lawyer. And what I mean by that is he went and got personal injury lawyers to sue his friend, the homeowner, immediately. So while I was still arranging services, for my children. I had to stop what I was doing and hire a personal injury lawyer to make sure he wasn't the only one in the suit. Which makes me really upset because it's all about money. Zale and Saxon are just nine and seven years old. Their father and his friend, both diving experts, gave his children diving gear and told them to go play in the pool unsupervised. The children did just that, but their tanks were filled with helium. Helium is unbreathable and both children drowned. Only on five tonight, we have learned the state attorney's office will not be filing charges in what it calls a heartbreaking tragedy. Their mother, someone who also understands diving, is heartbroken and angry with her ex-husband. Sorry, it just makes my heart hurt. No one is saying these men did this intentionally but two diving experts should know better. They gave children equipment, dangerous equipment, and told them to go play by themselves. So yeah, I'm a scuba diving professional. He's a scuba diving professional. He went to work at the home of another scuba diving professional. 
But my children were not scuba diving professionals. My children did not have experience with scuba diving. My children wouldn't know anything about testing scuba equipment. They definitely wouldn't know that if they breathed off of a helium regulator and they sounded like Donald Duck that something was wrong. I'm angered. I'm angered. The state attorney of Florida says this. After significant legal research conducted by my chief assistant and one of my major crime prosecutors, it was determined that the state could not, in good faith, seek criminal charges in this heartbreaking, tragic event. Stated quite simply, the law and the facts prohibit a criminal prosecution in this instance. These findings and conclusions were communicated to the Martin County Sheriff's Office and they have concurred with our decision. But here's what's frustrating about that statement. Under Florida Statute 82703, it says this, a caregiver's failure or omission to provide a child with the care, supervision, and services necessary to maintain the child's physical and mental health, including but not limited to food, nutrition, clothing, shelter, supervision, medicine, and medical services that are prudent, person would consider essential for the well-being of the child. Children playing with dangerous equipment requires supervision. It is prudent. But for some reason, the state doesn't see it that way. This is Saxon. Saxon is really afraid of video, so he runs away all the time. See, right now, he is really trying to run away from me because he hates videos. This is why he does this. He wants YouTube to I'm angered. I'm angered. That my children don't get justice. I know it doesn't bring them back. It doesn't mean I should let it go. Well, I got a few answers, but I still got questions. And maybe by now I should have learned my lesson. Zale and Saxon deserve justice. Please share the story as much as possible and sign the petition to reopen the investigation. As always, thank you so much for watching. Special thanks to Nicole for bringing this situation to my awareness. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below and I will see you next time. <music>